it's Stephanie here from Oh You're Lovely and today do we have a treat for you. We are celebrating our two year anniversary of Oh You're Lovely. So we're going to do a full tutorial. We won't speed up anything, but we might cut things up. M maybe. And I'll explain why in a second. So let's just roll the, roll the intro. where we carry the largest selection of wood flowers in the United States for the last two years. Can I get a holla? Oh my gosh, yes, we are celebrating. When this goes live, our anniversary is the following day. Yay! Um, and so we're gonna do a q and I've got some questions all ready to go. We asked our group, which if you're not part of our Facebook group, come, come hang out with us. It's put a flower on it. I'll try to remember to put it in the in the description. I didn't say comments. I said it right. I'm getting good at this stuff. Anywho, so we're going to do a QA. and a We got lots of questions. I also asked on Instagram. I pulled some of those too. So we're going to answer them. Also, Maggie May, we'll pop a picture up right here. Oh, you're lovely isn't just me. No, I have a business partner. Her name is Maggie May. No, it's not Maggie May. It's Maggie. I call her Maggie May. I don't know why. There's no story behind it. But anywho, Maggie is also going to be answering some of the questions. She just let me know her answers and will also come up later on as to, to why she's not on camera and it's this lovely mug all the time. Um, it was one of the questions. So I will answer some of the questions that she let me know her answers to as well as I'll answer some of them. I will answer, both of us will answer. But so that I'm not just a talking head as this intro has rambled on forever. <sighs> I have a stylized shoot to do soon. And so we are gonna work with a bunch of beautiful boho-esque kind of greenery. We're gonna build the base and then we're gonna play with some flowers and we're gonna build a bouquet because, now this comment's not there anymore because it kind of hurt my feelings, but I was told I was dumb. And I was told I was dumb because I speed up our tutorials. And the reason being is to make a full bouquet it can take anywhere to a half an hour to an hour, sometimes even longer if, I, if I'm struggling in between. And so we do speed it up because we want it to be digestible, but also giving you little bits of like advice as we go, but you don't need to see me do every single individual piece. But oh, today, today you are in for a treat because I'll answer questions while I make the bouquet so there won't be as much speeding up of this process. So hopefully this is not an hour long tutorial. But it could be. All right, let's jump into it. Question number one. I want to hear more about your why. Why y'all started Oh You're Lovely, also sometimes referred to as OYL. Why y'all decided to be entrepreneurs and how to stay motivated through life's busy season. This is where I'm gonna stare off at the can or on the, my computer screen for a second. And then once I read Maggie's answer, I will then start working on said tutorial itself. Maggie's answer was, one of the big reasons we started this business together is because we both fell in love hard with the flowers. Absolutely true. And at the time, there was not a, de a dependable supplier in the USA. I was very confident that our two skill sets combined, we could be a powerhouse together and offer super dependable. <laughs> this whole video is gonna be me going <laughs> We could be a powerhouse together and offer super dependable options for people wanting these flowers. Yeah, I'm not gonna add anything to that. It was absolutely why we, we started, oh, the motivated, how we stay motivated. Um, just remembering what our why is. Our why is because we love these flowers so much and we want to be super dependable. So on the, the hardest days, we just dust ourselves off and pick it back up the next day. How did you decide who was going to be, who was going to do all the tutorials? Megan's answer. Easy. She doesn't like being on camera. And that's the truth. And I, I don't mind. So, there's that. Um, actually, a little bit of the background or backstory about that was when, um, Oh You're Lovely was like, 
whispers in both of our minds. I was already doing Facebook Live tutorials. My original goal though, before I stumbled upon the lovely flowers that we work with now, was working with um, brands. So doing some sort of um, type of like tutorials and things like that, but working specifically with sponsored content. Well, boy oh boy, did our, our lives and situations change. But I was already doing uh, YouTube tutorials, I was doing uh, Facebook Lives once a week at that point. So it just kind of, I already was comfortable doing that and so I was happy to, to take over the quote unquote face of the business when we decided to combine our superpowers into one amazing, lovely business. Where do you find the time? How do you keep motivated? <laughs> so May's answer to this. And right now, you guys, I'm just I'm just adding stuff, and we'll see what all happens. I'm kind of doing it in groups, and I'll explain the theme later too of this stylish shoot that we have. I think you'll you'll gather what we're doing in a in a second. Um, as Maggie put it, we legit work all all the time. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> and she goes, I mean, all of the time. Yeah, a sheet I both work until. Wee hours of the night, super, super early in the morning. Like it's nonstop all the time. And it's just kind of some of the sacrifices you make with a, a growing baby business. A baby biz, as we like to call it. Um, she goes, and the two big things that keep us motivated are seeing the impact on our small little business having on all of our customers and community. Very true. And we pride in ourselves of providing steady income for both of our families. Maggie and I both. Um, our mothers, I have five kids. Maggie has one kiddo. Um, we both homeschool. And Maggie homeschooled before the world fell apart. Um, I decided to make that leap and homeschool my kids this year. Um, so it's been an interesting kind of change of events, turn of events, if you will. Um, but also, um, this we wanted to, we pride ourselves in being um, a, a significant amount of the um, income in our families and um, we have some big lofty goals for for the lives of our children so um, yes those are those are big motivators for us what were your best and worst moments situations when you started oh you're lovely how did you overcome the obstacles and Maggie's answer to this was I think there really can be a few answers for this but one of our biggest obstacles in the first six months was outgrowing the original space that we were in, which, uh, um, the one thing I, I haven't, I don't, if you're new around here, hi, welcome to Oh Your Lovely Land. So glad to hear, to have you here. Um, the thing about our business that makes it very different is that I'm in Wisconsin, which my shirt actually says right there, Wisconsin. Maggie grew up in Wisconsin, but has since moved and we'll answer that question in a little bit. Um, and she moved quite a few years ago we started Oh Your Lovely across the country from each other and uh, have continued it that way. I work out of my studio in my home and Maggie ships all of our product out of a warehouse in North Carolina. Um, and when we started, the space was interesting because you could have like multiple little individual um, like offices. We got to the point where I believe we had for sure three, we might've had four individual spaces throughout this big complex that we'd have to go, it was just, it was a nightmare by the end. Um, and so, it, we had a, a super hard time finding a new space um, to take over. It took months um, of us negotiating, looking at places, um, all of, all that comes like with that. Um, it was super intense, and we've now been in our new space for about 14 months, which was, it was, it was meant to be all of the hurdles we went through. I will also say, and Maggie didn't say this in her response, but I will also say that even though we are in, this was at the time of what, 2018, end of 2018, beginning of 2019, it is still very hard, and this is like one of those things that gets me really amped up and worked up. It is very hard to have a business run by two independent, strong women and not still have to have a male perspective a husband with you, things like that. 
that wasn't lovely. I'll tell you that much. That was not okay. It ruffled our feathers. It frustrated us to no end. But luckily, over time, we found the right person. We have a lovely landlord that we absolutely adore and it was worth all the hurdles, but boy oh boy were there some hurdles. Look at that, we're getting there already. We're getting there. How did Maggie get to North Carolina? How do you come up with your awesome specialist crates and alls? Um, Maggie, <laughs> she went to North Carolina um, because she was gonna be a nanny for a friend and then fell in love with the place and never left. Um, and then she just freaking loves the creative product development side of things. Uh, she comes up with the coolest ideas. Uh, we're both kind of quirky, um, goofy. Um, what are some other great descriptor words? We're just, we're odd ducks. Um, we like to have fun and we like to offer unique, odd things that you're not seeing within our, our niche and try to also, we listen to our customers and if there's something missing within the, the industry, we're trying to make sure that we can um, offer it with our own little quirky spin. How did you come up with the name of Oh You're Lovely, When Did You Start? Okay, so that's actually all me because before Maggie and I um, teamed up together, Oh You're Lovely was all me. Um, it actually started, the business name was originally Lovely Retro Renos. And um, because of the way Renos is spelt, people kept thought, thinking it was Renos because it was Renos for renovations. I was a furniture painter, um, had a booth and an antique place and I was doing um, home decor pieces and stuff and then the flowers actually just kind of fell into place with that because of, um, I needed other things to like kind of add to my home decor stuff and somehow I stumbled upon the flowers and started putting on them on um, pretty much everything. Um, so around that time, I knew that I was gonna, not be doing so much furniture painting and I was gonna be offering all kinds of other things, so I changed the business name. Um, I like pretty things. I like pink, um, flowers, um, kind of a vintage vibe. So I started playing around with just different words and really loved the word lovely um, and changed the business name to Oh You're Lovely shortly after that because there was a URL that was available and all of the social media was available. Um, except for one, which is now why a lot of our stuff says, oh, you're lovely official, because we're trying to be consistent. But it was around, so we, I went with that. Um, that was the goal originally, was to do um, the sponsored work, and um, the universe and life had other plans. So there's that. Uh, oh, you're lovely, as our duo, was our hard launch was two years to, as this goes live tomorrow, um, the lovely Retro Renos and Oh You're Lovely was at least three more years prior to that um, that I was doing furniture painting and tutorials and things like that. The tutorials that were uh, about a, six months to a year before Maggie and I decided that we were gonna go to business together. I'm going to tie this off because I feel good. Oh, son of a gun, I just realized I'm not done. But I am gonna probably, um, tie this up for right now, and then add in this, this little extra bit. All right. How do you decide on the names for the flowers? Um, a whole bunch of different ways, but we did, when we started Oh You're Lovely, we purposely knew that we wanted to come up with all of the names of the flowers ourselves. Um, there are a few other companies out there that sell the wood flowers, and we wanted to make sure that we there was no confusion as far as like, are we all one the same, all that stuff. So we purposely made sure to name all of our flowers different. The, especially the first couple of rounds, uh, well actually all of the rounds, there's always a couple flowers that we're naming after specific people in our lives, whether that is our mothers, grandmothers, our children, things like that. Um, sometimes <laughs> we have a series of flowers that are named after the Golden Girls. Um, there's also some music references. There's movie references. We also name certain flowers after strong females in history. Um, just all kinds of different things. It just kind of depends to, I'm a little quirky, again, we're quirky, but I have this thing every once in a while that I swear the flower tells me what the name it needs to be. Um, some of them are usually like um, Lola, 
Veronica, Liza, things like that. There's just some, and we have Thelma and Louise. There's certain ones that are just like, this is my name, this is what I'm meant to be. Um, I don't know why it does that, but it is what happens. Um, so also we, every once in a while, we'll ask some friends. Um, we've asked customers in the past, we've done some giveaways um, where people give us some name ideas and then we'll send them a dozen of that flower that we um, picked if we picked their name, things like that. <laughs> my dad had a question. Yes, my dad, um, my parents both are super supportive. Um, and <laughs> my dad in particular hangs out on our Facebook group a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of trolls me there and teases me like everybody else does during lives and things. Um, my dad goes, I heard Stephanie had once planned on being a over the road trucker. Is that true? It is true. I did say that when I was about 16 because my parents, if I wanted the car that they gave me, if I wanted to drive that car, it was a stick shift. I had to learn how to drive a stick shift, which I'm very grateful that that was how, um, they went about it and that I was forced to learn if I wanted to drive a car, it was gonna be a stick shift. So I thought I was gonna be, whoops, losing flowers. I thought I was gonna um, see the world when I turned 18 or you know after college or something and just become a, a trucker and see the world. Funny, now in my 30s, I have horrible driving anxiety. I can't drive anywhere that I don't know very well. I don't like big cities to drive through. Um, and I have legit panic attacks when I do, when I have to, especially if there's like road construction or something. Um, so yeah, that never happened. Um, not ever going to happen, but yes, there was, there was talk of it at some point. <laughs> oh, okay. My, this is a cute one. If you weren't running a kick-ass business, thank you. What would your dream job be? Um, Maggie answered, this is a hard one and I probably will have a different answer if you ask me in two days. I, I'm gonna agree with that. Um, I think I have to say a hobby farm that has an event center on it for weddings and stuff like that. Well, oh, Maggie, I didn't know that. That's cool. Um, my dream job? Well, when I was teeny tiny, I thought I was gonna be a country singer. Um, I can't carry, well, I can kind of carry a tune, but not very well, so that's not going to happen. But that was my dream job when I was teeny tiny, so we'll go with that. I also would like the hobby farm, but I want somebody else to like, I just want to play with the goats and not actually have to run the farm. That sounds good. <laughs> How did you guys meet? I think discussed this in an earlier part, but uh, Maggie and I grew up together. We've known each other our entire lives, basically. Um, and we grew up in a very small farm town in Wisconsin. Yes, Wisconsin. Yep. She left, I stayed. I went, um, we grew up way up in like near, we'll just stay near the Green Bay area because otherwise we'll get other discussions going. But near the Green Bay area, kind of, sort of, but closer to Lake Michigan. Um, grew up there in a farm town. And I have since moved further um, south. Yeah. Where was the first time you heard or seen of wood sheets or flowers? Um, so I was the one that introduced them to Maggie at the time. Again, I was doing Facebook Lives. And um, with that, I stumbled upon them because of a blog somebody had had about painting them because you can dye them with craft acrylic paint. And I, again, was doing furniture painting at one point. So paint has always been my thing. I was a mixed media artist. I guess I could still say hey, I'm a mixed media artist. I really enjoyed painting and playing with art supplies and things like that. Um, so that really intrigued me and got me super excited. So I introduced them to Maggie um, and everybody else that was watching the Facebook Live tutorials that I did. She got interested in them. They like blew her mind as well and then we just became obsessed. Are you first generation business owners? What did your parents do? Well, and my parents are still working at the point at this point. Um, Maggie is, yes, a first generation. Her dad worked in woodworking factory most of his adult career and had many other or had many different jobs there, moved up the ladder the longer he stayed. Her mom went from a front end manager at a grocery store for a long time. And when Maggie was in middle school, she went back to college, got her accounting degree and was an accountant until she retired. Uh, my family, my parents are both still working. Um, I have very young parents. 
Um, my dad is a, um, I was gonna say a chemical engineer, but that's what I went to school for. <laughs> Originally, I didn't get my degree. Um, my dad is a mechanical engineer um, and does research and development. My mother has um, worked in customer service most of my life and actually works nights now um, at good old Walmart. She's worked there for quite a long time um, and she's ready to retire. <laughs> I can say that, right, mom? I think so. Um, so both super hard working and I'm very, very proud of my parents. Um, but they're, they're getting, they're, they're starting, they might start a countdown already for uh, their retirement. I'm just, I'm just saying from what I've, what I've gathered <laughs> in our conversations. Um, so yes, we are both first generation um, entrepreneurs and business owners. All right, so I've added some uh, of our paper flowers in there. I'm going to do another row of this vinyl tape and then we're going to paint a couple of the flowers while I answer some more questions. So the um, bouquet that I'm working on is for a stylized shoot that's coming up. Um, I did get a picture of like a reference of the kind of style that she's going for. So I'm picking, I'm kind of dyeing some of the flowers to be as close as possible to the live fresh flowers that she had. Um, so I airbrushed everything. I'm not gonna, at this point, if you wanna see the tutorial on how to airbrush, I will also try to remember to link that in the description. But basically she wanted uh, oranges and peaches is what we've got going. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, these are going to kind of give a vibe of a ranuncula. Um, and I need to add a little bit of green to the centers. So I'm just gonna grab some of this like kind of pea green, which they call it deep celery. And then I've got a little bit of desert sand, both from Anita's. I'm gonna mix this up, add a little bit of water, and we're gonna paint the centers of the flowers while I answer more questions. Yay! Um, what did you do before you got into solo flowers? Here is Maggie's answer. Um, the major jobs have had, other than owning more, more owning, what, huh? What did you say, Maggie? Maggie was, had her own creative businesses uh, prior um, where she sold at booths and things like that all over the place. She's also worked with developmentally delayed adults, worked with troubled teen girls. I tell you, Maggie is amazing. Uh, she was a VP of a yarn company and a few other odd uh, jobs in between there. Uh, myself, I, oh my gosh, how many jobs? I've had so many jobs in my life. Um, a large portion of them, and at one point when I was going to school full time, um, I was also working 80 hours a week, was um, mostly customer service, but I've also done like transcription work. I've worked in a call center for, um, I know all about EOBs and things like that. I worked for um, insurance in terms of the customer care um, line that way. Uh, lots and lots and lots of customer service jobs over the years. And then my job right before I decided to really um, start my own business was I was the um, office manager for a company where the owner um, no longer lived in the state. So I ran the the day-to-day -day operations of that business. Um, and that really, that was what really taught me and gave me a lot of insight to, to everything that I do now on a, a regular basis. So I'm really grateful that I had that opportunity. Um, I was very young at the time. I was in my um, mid and into the, my late 20s. I also had a ton, tons of babies at that point. Um, and so I left that job just because I had had, um, I needed to be able to, I couldn't um, afford enough childcare with the amount of young babies that I had in, my, in our family at the time. Um, and so I started my own business in terms of a creative business because all this time once I once I had my um, oldest daughter who's now 14 going on 15 um, I started creating as like an outlet or a kind of a mental health kind of break because um, your life kind of completely changes when you have a kiddo and when that happened um, I started sewing and then that turned into uh, painting and all this like it was just this weird transition of all this stuff so um, I started 
the furniture painting and within that furniture painting, um, I started a product line that really grew some legs real fast. Um, and the, the state signs that I was making, um, I started selling wholesale across the country as well as to department stores and things like that. So again, another real fun life situation that has now really um, been able to help me navigate all of the things that we do now on a regular basis. Here's the, um, one of the other questions. I'd love to know more about the women who make the flowers. So, interesting enough, it's not just women. We work with a few different uh, manufacturers overseas. A primary, a primar primarily our flowers come from India and our India, um, our manufacturer from India, we've gotten to know very well to the point where um, they know our kids' names they send um, our kids, they sing our, to our kids happy birthday um, and send them videos. Um, so it's been very, it's been a very interesting experience um, and very rewarding um, to get to um, get to know other people across the world. But it is not just women that uh, make the flowers. Sometimes can be full families that are making the flowers. Um, men also make the flowers, uh, and it's a safe job um, for our employees as far as or for the artisans that make our flowers because they're not our employees they're um, they're basically like we're in a partnership or a collaboration with them but um, it's a safe way for them to provide for their own families um, and then our some of our other flowers come from Thailand and we work with one person in particular um, for those flowers as well um, and have grown to to know him very well also so um, we do have, I don't know if it's on our YouTube channel or not when we we did have a we had entered for a um, a grant one time and we have some pictures of some of the artisans making the flowers if I can find it I'll pop it up in this video and if I can't um, I'm sorry it's somewhere it's somewhere floating around the internet I think that's it for the questions so now we're gonna do a full regular tutorial we're gonna stem up these flowers I'm gonna I'm gonna get off camera for a second I'm gonna stem all the flowers we're gonna put this together and we'll wrap this up so I guess we are gonna speed up some of this I thought I was gonna be talking a lot more than I am lucky you <laughs> it's not gonna be an hour-long video all right guys, I've got my flowers stemmed up, ready to go. Um, the last question that we got, and then I might ramble on for just a few more minutes, but this last question was, I'm starting my own business with a partner. Um, they're in particular doing bookkeeping for small to medium sized businesses. How did the two of you start building your client base? So accounting or bookkeeping is probably, well, for sure, is a little bit different in terms of um, we're doing um, a product-based business versus a service-based business. Um, but Maggie and I knew when we made the launch, when we decided we were gonna we're gonna go all in. Um, Maggie and I are not ones to do anything small, um, and so we knew from the get-go that we were going to import a million flowers. Yes, we in imported an entire container of flowers, which is just about are actually just over a million flowers um, and so while that was happening uh, we started um, really amping up our social media presence um, we dedicated or committed ourselves to doing um, at the time it was once a week no we turned it into twice a week tutorials um, so we started with the Thursday or the Tuesday mornings coffee and craft and Thursday evenings, Crafting After Bedtime, which was my original um, Facebook uh, live series. Um, so we just continued with that. Um, and with that, we were consistent in that. We were, anytime someone had a question within social media, um, within any groups that were a niche to the solo world itself, um, we made a point of trying to answer questions, be helpful, um, things like that, because we wanted, we wanted our 
um, our, to our, when we started talking about it. Now at this time, I was also doing um, shows. So I was um, selling the, all my finished pieces as well. So I was showing my, my booth display. I was talking about um, situations that happen, answering questions about like starting your first, like having your first show. Um, pricing, things like that, just from my own experience. Um, it came from a place of wanting to help. Um, and that's what we, we were consistent with everything that we did. I think consistency, especially on social media, is really important. It's important for the social media, the algorithm itself, the, the more consistent you are, the more all of these different platforms like it because they know that they can trust you to be delivering great content to help people stay on their platforms. So you're you're kind of a partner with social media in some ways, if you want to look at it that way. Um, so there's always that, you want to be consistent. So whatever you dedicate yourself to, you want to make sure that when you're dedicating yourself that you are, you're knowing that you are going to continue to do that for you know as long as, as possible. Um, and so there was that. Um, what else did we do? I mean, we were just, we were always there. Like, uh, we started our Facebook page. We started the group shortly after. Um, we had a soft launch with some other products just to kind of test the waters to make sure we weren't completely crazy, even though the flowers were already ordered. So if we, we if what our soft launch would have tanked, um, there was nothing we could have done about it. <laughs> and we had a really great soft launch. Um, and then we just kept at it nonstop. We don't stop. We keep going. If we have a bad day, that's all right. Everybody has a bad day. We just get up and we keep on keeping on. Um, it's really our, our way we do everything. So um, we keep our sense of humor to things. i very lucky that I have Maggie. Without Maggie, and I would hope she would say the same about me. I think she would. Without Maggie, um, my sanity would be way in question at this point. Um, it is not easy to have your own small creative business um, and the, the growth that we've had in such a short period of time, um, it can kind of take your breath away, but it also can make you um, a little weak in the knees and go, what What am I doing to myself? So um, I'm very grateful for her. So on the worst days, I have someone to commiserate with and on the best days, I have someone to celebrate with. Um, so I, I really lucked out with that. Also saying with um, business partners, you need to, communication is huge. Um, having your legal stuff in order, having a business plan and having um, a partner agreement, all of those things are important. Yes, they're, they're money, they're time, and you have to have tough conversations, but super, super important. All right, I think the bouquet is done. Holy buckets, this is a little intense. We're going for a boho kind of thought. I hope this is, I, I hope. I'm gonna go send pictures right now to the photographer. Hopefully I've, I've nailed it. Um, in an upcoming tutorial, we are going to go behind the scenes on a photo shoot. I actually still have to make a um, sweetheart table centerpiece, so I'm gonna be doing that. Maybe I'll film that. Yeah, maybe we'll film that and we'll, we'll mix it in um, to the behind the scenes of the um, photo shoot. So, Fingers crossed, if the sweetheart table looks completely different, you know I missed the mark on this one and you'll see that soon enough in an upcoming YouTube, YouTube tutorial. Um, uh, let's see, wrapping this up. Um, thank you so much for two amazing years and here's to so many more. Um, we have such big plans, dreams, um, everything, all of it and more. Um, we've been enjoying this ride and this ride is in no way possible without each and every single one of you. So thank you so much. Um, if you're loving what we're doing, can't get enough, want to know when our next tutorial goes live. I was going to try to say something else, but you might as well stick to the tried and true. Make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. If you're new around here, definitely subscribe. We um, do tutorials once a week, all about that consistency, usually on Wednesdays, most times, unless the internet and technology hates me, which that also happens. Yes, it does. Uh, to find out about the 150 style wood flowers along with craft supplies and greenery, go to ohyourlovely.com. And until next time, this is Stephanie with the help of Maggie. I'll, maybe we'll pop her picture up again. Thank you so much.
You, my friends, are absolutely lovely. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.